just wanted to welcome everybody here today and pull up, call up the, the four folks who are going to be on the, the three other folks who are going to be on this first welcome session. Um, I wanted to just say very brief thanks to our partners in this um, day of learning. Um, Wharton's Pension Research Center, Olivia Mitchell has been a great partner, and her staff, Joe Brooker in particular, have been great, and the folks here at Paralyn Quad have really helped us get things going smoothly. Um, and our partners from the ARP, we couldn't be more thrilled to have such great partners um, helping us get the word out and, and bringing their talents to the table as well. So without further ado, since it's her house, um, I'll turn things over to Olivia Mitchell from Wharton's Pension Research Council. Good morning. People who work on pensions like to start early, and this is no exception. So we thank all of you for being here, and uh, particularly our excellent panelists that are going to be speaking to us this morning. As uh, Jeff said, my name is Olivia Mitchell. I'm the director of the Pension Research Council, which is my, the group, the center that I run here at the Wharton School. So on behalf of Wharton and the University of Pennsylvania more broadly, I welcome all of you to this interesting discussion on paths to retirement security for Philadelphia. Just a couple words by way of background. We know that the aging of the baby boom, rising longevity, and dwindling productivity growth all pose new challenges to our city, our country, and indeed to the world. In the past, Social Security was the bastion of older Americans' retirement income. But the system was never intended to be the be-all or end-all of retirement support, and it faces near-term shortfalls. The Congressional Budget Office recently released its own estimate of when the, when the system would have its trust fund exhausted, and this will be, according to the CBO, in the year 2029, not 2034, as the trustees reported last March. This is in 13 years, folks, so it's not too late to start thinking about retirement security. Against this worrisome backdrop, states and cities across the country are seeking new ways to do better for retirees. Today's discussion, along with the many thoughtful and creative leaders from academia, industry, and government, will help us identify how to better design retirement saving plans for those that don't have pension, the non-pensioned. The proposals we be, will be discussing today show how state or city-sponsored tax-favored retirement saving plans can be created, which businesses can join at low cost and low risk. The goal today is to try to find ways to boost Philadelphia's ability to attract more businesses while making it easier for the unpensioned to save. A couple of uh, housekeeping notes for those of you that need restrooms. I think the ladies is out the hall upstairs all the way at the end, and I don't know where the men's room is, but somebody <laughs> out there, thank you very much. Please turn off your cell phones. We will be getting Wi-Fi passwords. Apologies for not having those right away. And um, on behalf of the University of Pennsylvania and the Pension Research Council, I particularly thank Alan Butkovitz from the Controller's Office of the City of Philadelphia and his colleague Jeff Hornstein and all the folks there that made this happen today, the AARP and Desiree Hung, and our fine staff at the Pension Research Council for their parts in making this conversation possible. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for having me here today. My name is Dr. Desiree Hung, and I am the Director of Government Relations for AARP Pennsylvania. I want to uh, take a moment right now to thank our Executive Council members that are here in the audience today, Dr. Neil Cutler, thank you for coming, as well as Mr. Carl Bailey. I'd also like to thank the volunteers and the staff of AARP, particularly our Project Manager, De Jenny Eber, our Director of Communications, Jackie Asasi. AARP is the largest nonprofit, nonpartisan organization representing the interests of the 50 plus and their families. More than a quarter of our members are employed full or part time, with many of the employers not providing an opportunity to save for retirement. 
a majority priority for AARP is to assist Americans in accumulating and effectively managing adequate retirement assets to supplement Social Security. We have been working for decades at both the federal and state levels to improve and expand coverage under the retirement systems, especially employees working for small employers, and we will certainly continue this fight. A 2015 nationwide public opinion poll found that an overwhelming majority of Americans, 86% in fact, believe that our country faces a retirement crisis. Nearly 75% of Americans are concerned about their ability to achieve a secure retirement. In fact, the percentage of workers very confident about having enough money for a comfortable retirement has hit an all-time record low since the recession. And this concern is for good reason. As it stands today, one out of two households are at risk of financial insecurity in retirement. This doesn't mean missing out on retirement of leisure or grand travel, but rather these are middle class households that are going to be unable to afford food, medicine, utilities, even shelter. According to the National Institute on Retirement Security, the median retire retirement account balance is $3,000 for all working age households and $12,000 for near retirement households. Three out of five families headed by a person 65 or older have no money in retirement savings accounts. Now it may not seem like it, but there's actually some good news in these statistics. This predicament is due in large part to a lack of access to retirement plans at work, and that is a highly fixable problem. Behavioral economics is a relatively new field. In the last few decades, we've learned that when there is an opportunity to save for retirement at work, seven out of 10 people take advantage of it. Individuals are 15 times more likely to save if they can do so via a payroll deduction. On the flip side, only 5% of workers without access go out on their own to open an IRA. Making benefits easy to use, efficient, affordable, and most importantly accessible makes a huge difference. That's why AARP Pennsylvania believes all private sector workers in the state deserve access to a way to save for retirement at work. Unfortunately, roughly half of our nation's private sector workers do not have a way to save for retirement out of their regular paycheck. That's a total of 55 million people. In Pennsylvania, roughly 66% of workers who do not have a high school degree lack access to employer-provided retirement plans. Yet one out of three employees with a bachelor degree or higher also lack access to a retirement plan. Access affects workers of all income levels. Surprisingly, more than a third of all private sector workers in our state, making over $25,000 per year, lack access to a way to save at work. Only 25% of small business employees, that's businesses with fewer than 10 people, have access to a workplace retirement plan in the state. Conversely, 70% of employees working in businesses with more than 1,000 people have access to a plan. Communities of color are disproportionately affected by lack of access to retirement plans. Workers of color are significantly less likely than white workers to be covered by employer-sponsored retirement plans. In Pennsylvania, roughly 52% of African American and Asian employees and 55.6% of Latino employees lack access to a workplace savings plan, and this is compared to 42% of white employees. Taken together, these facts mean that future retirees are likely to be over-reliant on Social Security, and Social Security alone will not provide enough security. The average monthly Social Security benefit in Pennsylvania is $1,282. As it stands, three in 10 older Pennsylvanians rely on Social Security as their only source of income. If nothing changes, Social Security will likely be the main source of retirement income for the most middle class retirees moving forward. This phenomenon costs taxpayer dollars on social safety net spending down the line. According to a recent study, the total cost to taxpayers for new retirees in that state will top $3.7 billion over the next 15 years. For these reasons, there is widespread agreement that Americans are not financially prepared for retirement. 
AARP has conducted public opinion surveys in multiple states on retirement security, saving options, and proposed state workplace savings legislation. Consistently, across political views, 70 to 80 percent of voters agree that elected officials should support a retirement savings plan to help small business workers and help small businesses stay competitive. There are simple steps take, that can be taken to um, excuse me, there are simple steps that can be taken to divert these startling trends that I just highlighted. The best way to improve retirement security is to ensure that everyone who works has access to a low-cost, professionally managed retirement plan that enables them to save automatically out of every paycheck. This public-private partnership makes it easier for employees to establish a basic retirement savings option and allows small businesses to attract and retain high-quality employees. State legislatures, and now cities, have seized on this concept. In 2012, only a handful of states were discussing retirement security, but in 2016, more than 30 states are considering those ramifications. Similarly, Seattle, New York, and now Philadelphia join in discussing ways cities can engage in this effort. <clears throat> Seven states have implemented programs to help small businesses. These include California, Connecticut, Illinois, Maryland, New Jersey, Oregon, and Washington. We hope to add Pennsylvania to that list. Specifically, look for AARP Pennsylvania to propose and engage in work and save legislation in the 2017 legislative year. I will actively be working to further such legislation on behalf of our 1.8 million members, and I really invite you to join me. I wish you would join me in furthering this cause. I can be reached at dhung at aarp.org, and I would dearly love to have your partnership. Once again, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you to the panelists. Jeff, I would like to say, Dr. Hornstein, a special thank you to you for convening this. We do appreciate you reaching out to us. Thank you, everyone.